Good morning, Super Readers! Thank you for joining us in our Valley PBS classroom. I'm Mrs. Nix. I'm Mrs. Hammock. And I'm Mrs. Bang. This is a place for us to learn, practice, and grow, grow our brains to become even stronger readers, writers, and thinkers. Mm -hmm. So let's get started by warming up our brains with some ear training called Daily, Daily Phonemic, Phonemic Awareness. Awareness. All right, so today we're gonna do a little bit of blending, but we're also going to practice some segmenting. So let's start with some blending first, okay. and then we'll get into the segmenting. Right. Okay, so I'm gonna give you some sounds. I like to use my arm, I see my friends also like to, but maybe you tap it out down your body, however you're gonna do it, and blend it together. All right, here we go. P or ch. Porch. 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 Nice. Nicely done. Okay, let's try another one. S n or. Snore. 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 Hmm. Do you snore when you're sleeping? <laughs> Never. <laughs> okay, now, now we took some sounds and we put them together. What if I did the exact opposite? And this time, we take the word and we pull it apart and oh. find all of the sounds. Okay, so that's gonna be more like pulling a rubber band, right? Okay, so the word is roar. Okay. Roar, so or. Oh, that was a big stretch. Or. Or. Yeah, not very two. big. I got two. 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 I got two yeah. sounds? Okay, how about Chore. Hmm. Ch. Or. Oh. Ch. I still chore. got two. I still got two. I did too. Amazing. Great job. So these are great activities for you to be practicing, maybe while you're driving around town with your parents or family members in the mm -hmm. car, right? Definitely. All right. So another thing that I totally love to do, and it's Friday. Friday. So let's do some dancing. Let's do some music. Let's do some movement. I love it. Okay, so this one's called play ball. Make sure you've got plenty of space. Mm -hmm. Stand up. Okay. I'm gonna start stretching. Stretching and, and being And we've been dancing ready. all week. And I know. Why are you gonna get my, I'm gonna get my finger You're ready. You're gonna get your finger ready? Uh -huh. That's right. right. Here we go. <laughs> I think I'm off. <laughs> ah, it's Friday. It's Friday. We want to go play baseball. Yes, it's probably warm enough. We should do it. Ooh. But let's learn our focus sound first. You know, okay. that'll probably okay. help us because then we can read all the signs when we go to play. That's, That's true. All right, I like we'll it. see you later. Okay. Okay, super readers, let's practice our phonic skill of the week. This week we are practicing the or sound. Good job. That or sound can be spelled three different ways. Can you guys help me spell it? Good. O R can say or. Good job. O R E can say or. Good job. And O A R can say or. Good job. So our focus on this week is the 
or sound, and there are three different ways that we can build it. Um, well, not build it. Oh, Mrs. Meng's brain is tired. Three different ways we can write, uh, write it. So, you know what? I think I'm going to have my friends come and let's just practice building words with that or sound. How about that? Friends! Oh, oh, there oh, they oh, are! Happy Friday! Woo! Oh. Happy Friday! Are you guys ready to build some words with me? Ooh, yeah. let's do it! Because you guys have been doing such a good job with blending, I thought we'd just go straight into the building mm. words with that or sound. That sounds good to me. Are you guys ready at home? Okay, I think our super writers, readers are ready at home. Okay, how about the word storm? Can you guys help me build the word storm? St mm. That segment is storm. Storm. Ooh, ooh. ooh did you guys figure it out? It has four sounds. St yeah, it does. Yeah. Mm, good thinking. Four okay. sounds. St st st. Oh, oh, it's got an S and then a T. Good. St, st. And I like how you're using or, your arm right there, st, blending it out. Or, or, or mm. oh, and you know what? You told us at the beginning of the week that a lot of times it's spelled with O-R in the middle yep. of a word. So let's try it with O-R, st, or, mm, M. Storm. Let's see. Yay, S -T that looks right to me. O R M storm. Mm. Good job. But we also learned that the O A R can also be in the middle. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that you chose the O R because that's how we spell storm. Good Yay. job. How about the word fort? Because oh, I know oh, I some of my friends fort. love to build a that's fort. Fun. Mm -hmm. oh, fort. Okay, how do we build fort? That's F. Good. Ooh. Uh, O-R. Do you guys agree? Oh, they agree with you. O-R and... Oh, look, that, that's oh, the word oh, for. 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 Now I just need to have it. <gasps> t -t -t -t. Good I job. Oh, oh, I, I like... like the little words are inside bigger words. That's so fun. Good thinking. So you went or and you went for, and that was the word, and then you said fort. We needed the T. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. Looking for those little small words inside a bigger word. Now, last word. Are you guys ready? Mm-hmm. How about the word snore? <gasps> we had that mm. earlier today. Mm. Snore. Mm. Let's or. see. Mm. Or. Okay, okay. It has three sounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it has a, that consonant blend. That's right. At, at the beginning, the mm -hmm. sn. What is it? So it's, it's mm. sn. Sn. Yep. Yeah. Sn. Yeah, oh, that's good it. thinking. Sn. Good job. Sn. Sn. And or. But or is at the end of the word. Mm -hmm. So Do you remember? What do we need? I think we use the O-R-E. Good thinking, because it's at the end of the word. We heard that or sound at the hey. end. So snore spelled S-N-O-R-E. How did you guys do at home? Awesome job. Thank you, friends, for helping us build words. I'm going to yeah. have my super readers help me read a sentence now. All right, bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Good job this week. Okay, super readers, you guys have been doing a great job all week learning our or sound. Let's practice reading this sentence with our or sounds. Ready? Did they score or was the ball short? How did you do? Awesome job, super readers. Okay, let's see what high-frequency words you're going to be learning with Mrs. Hammock today. Okay, it's Friday, and we are down to our last word for the week, but let's review all of them. We have sure, began, better, learn, write, and guess. All right, so today, we're going to work on the word right. Now, this is like a directional word, right or left, not like what you do with a pencil. Right, let's look at it, R-I-G-H-T, right. All right, let's look at a sentence and see how it might look. This is the right way to hold a fork. Now, in this sentence, it's not talking about directions. It's talking about correct or not correct, right? So this is the right way to hold a fork. 
Good. So now you can see how all of these words fit into sentences, and you can practice making some sentences on your own. But today, I'm going to ask Mrs. Nix to come because I have a new game that we're going to play. It's called Build a Tower. All right, so here's how our game goes. We have our high-frequency words on cards here, and they're face down. And what we're going to do is we're going to take turns, and she's going to turn over a card. If she can read that word, then she's going to find the cup that has the word with it, and she gets to move it up front as the base of our tower. And then, I'm, then I'll go, and we'll, and we'll see if we can get enough cards correct to build a fabulous tower. All and right? you know what's really fun with it is when you get a lot of words because oh, yeah. we could really build Ooh, a you big could get a tower. tower. Ooh, Ooh. That would be fun. Okay. All right. You can go first. Okay. So the word is began. Began. Okay. So I will start Okay. over here. All right. Um, let's see. My word is sure. Sure going to look for it. Okay, now I think I might scoot it kind of next to there because I want it to make sure it's a nice sturdy mm -hmm. base. Okay, so I have the word guess. Now, I can do a couple of things. I could start our tower or I could continue and make our base. Which one should I do? You want to do the base? Okay, I think we'll do the idea. base. All right, I am right. All right. And now I can put that one up to start our tower. And our last one that we have today is learn. So I can put that one right there. And if we had more, we, we could build going. more. Right. So what a fun isn't thing. that? It is so much fun. So if you took the words from last week and this week, then you would have 12 words to build towers with. Do you see how much fun that can be? And it's just another way to practice with your high frequency words. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you'll give it a try because I think you'll enjoy it. And today we're going to learn about some other inventors, the Wright brothers. And then we're going to talk about what their problems and how they solved those problems as they were inventing. Do you remember what they invented? Well, let's find out. We'll see you back in a few minutes. The Wright brothers by Mel Abelin. What inventions do you know about? The Wright Brothers by Mel Abelin. Chapter one, who were the Wright Brothers? Chapter two, what did the Wright Brothers do? Chapter three, who invented the airplane? Chapter one, who were the Wright Brothers? Wilbur is on the left and Orville is on the right. Meet the two boys who flew the first airplane. Wilbur and Orville Wright were brothers. Wilbur was born first in 1867. Orville was born in 1871. The boys grew up in Iowa, Indiana, and Ohio. They loved to learn, think, and create in school and at home. School desk look like this when the brothers were boys. Chapter 2. What did the Wright brothers do? This is where the Wrights lived when Wilbur was recovering from his accident. Wilbur got hurt playing hockey in 1885. It took him three years to get better. He spent the time reading and taking care of his sick mom. Orville began working in a print shop. Wilbur joined his brother when he felt well. They invented a better printing press. Letters like these were used in printing presses. Bicycles looked like this until the brothers built a bike like the one below. In 1896, the brothers had another great idea. They fixed, sold, and built bicycles. They built a safer bike that was unusual for the time. 
It had two wheels that were the same size. It looked like the bikes we ride today. The brothers used money from the print and bike shops to begin their work with flight. Their dad had given them a flying toy when they were boys. They were interested in flight from then on. The Wright brothers' dad stands at the center of this family photo. Chapter three, who invented the airplane? This was the third glider that Wilbur and Orville built. The Wright brothers were sure they could build a flying machine. They needed to guess how to do it. Then they had to test their idea to see if they were right. They used model wings and wind tunnels. In 1902, they built a glider. It soared through the sky. In 1903, the Wrights tested their first plane. They were in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. The beachfront area was the best place for testing flight. The beach had soft sand dunes and wide open spaces. Orville took the first flight. He soared through the air for 12 seconds. The plane went 120 feet. Airplane flight had begun. In 1904 and 1905, the Wrights tested more planes. In 1908, they built the first plane for the United States Army. Wilbur and others watched Orville take off. The brothers worked with flight until they died. Wilbur got sick and died in 1912. Orville died in 1948. In 1928, there was a special event to thank the Wright brothers. A statue honoring them stands on a beach in North Carolina. Big wings are carved into the sides of the statue. So, did you enjoy reading all about the Wright brothers? Have you ever heard of them before? They're pretty amazing. They're first people who ever created an airplane. Okay, so help me go back and let's talk about, because with inventions, we've been talking about problems. Somehow the characters have a problem and they're trying to find a solution and they invent a solution. So what was the Wright brothers' problem? What did they wanna do? That's right, they wanted to build a plane. Now, here's where inventors really kinda of come to life. They've gotta come up with a creative way to solve that problem. So what were the steps that the Wright brothers took to build a plane? Could they just go out and just build it? No, they had to guess how to do it because no one had ever done it before. And then they built a glider using model wings and a wind tunnel to see if it would work. So just to see if they could make it float, right? Can you picture that? Were the Wright brothers successful with what they were trying to do? That's right, they were. So they built their very first plane in 1903, and they took it for a test flight. It didn't fly for very far, but it did fly, and it was the first time that we had, Amer uh, had humans flying. It was quite an accomplishment. So today, we're gonna talk about some things that fly. We talked about humans, the Wright brothers, but now I want us to come over here and think about and talk about some different things that fly. Can you think of some things maybe in nature that fly? What are things, some animals that we know that fly? Well, I wrote some up here. So we have bats can fly and birds can fly and butterflies could fly. So you can actually think of lots of different things that are in, did, did you say maybe even a, a bug? Like a fly can fly, right? So thinking of all kinds of things that fly, 
Now we're going to choose one and we're going to draw a picture. Uh, we'll draw a picture of it and then we're going to write a sentence to go with it. So for this one, I think I might choose a butterfly because I remember Mrs. Hammock at the beginning of the week working on her project. She had a beautiful butterfly. So I'm going to borrow her butterfly and maybe I'll put it right here. What else could I put in there? Well, maybe I might put a flower by it. What color should our flower be? Maybe a, like a kind of a pinky purple one. You think that would be pretty? So I could put something like that. And I want to make sure it's got a little center part in there. And maybe I need some grass that can be along here. Now, do flowers just kind of by, grow by themselves? Or maybe I need another little flower? All right, let me put another flower over here. So I can make my picture however I want it to look, right? And then I need to go through and write a sentence that's going to match it, right? Okay, so what could my sentence say if I had a picture that looks like this? Sometimes having a picture can help us think about what we want to write, right? So I might say something like, hmm, the beautiful butterfly flew by the flowers. Could I write that? Of course I could. Could I say um, the, f you know, the flowers were um, standing beautifully as the butterfly flew by? So lots and lots of different options for how I might want to write my sentence. But the one that I chose was the beautiful butterfly flew by the flowers and then I have my picture to go with it. I would love for you to be practicing some of these same strategies. Draw a picture, it definitely can help uh, when you're trying to be creative and think of something that you would like to do. All right, so speaking of trying to come up with something to do, we've done a lot of inventions this week and I'm gonna kinda kick it over to Mrs. Hammock and Mrs. Vang and talk with these guys because you guys have been working a whole lot. Yeah. Mm, we've been thinking, cause, cause all those inventions got me thinking of what I want to do for my project. That's right, because we're getting ready for the Cyber Chase Green It Up Earth Day Challenge. Now, that's where you're going to pick a topic uh, to, that celebrates Earth Days, and it could be, um, planting a flower garden. Mm. You might plant a vegetable garden. It could be about my project, which was pollinators and why we need butterflies and bees and bats and how they help us and how they're important and that we need to protect them. Okay, so I'm making a connection right now. So inventors invent things because there are problems that are happening. And so absolutely, we're going to be thinking about some of the problems around Earth Day. Right. And what we could do to help, right? That's exactly right. So, so like a solution? A definite solution. Problem and solution? You get to be an inventor. You're gonna read and talk about some ways that you can help to make Earth better, by, or cleaner, or ta just even taking care of it, like recycling, all kinds of things. And what we want you to do is to talk with your classmates, talk with your teacher. We want you guys to pick a project. It can be a little movie. You can make a little movie. You could do a mural. You could do a science experiment. You could do a poster. There are so many ways that you can demonstrate what you've learned about a way that you can help take care of the earth. And then on April 23rd, we want you to bring those projects to the MTM on the river which is the Fresno County Sportsman's Club, and we want you to bring it because that day is going to be like a huge Earth Day party celebration. And our friend Digit from Cyber Chase is going to be there. We're Digit. gonna have, I know, and we're gonna have so a scavenger excited. hunt. 
and we're going to show, show off your class projects and we are going to there's going to be all kinds of opportunities for you to plant plants and talk to other people in the community and there's even going to be some fun wildlife there that's How awesome fun. yeah uh, okay Speak, speaking of plants and fruits uh, what did the fruit ask at the end of the week i don't wow. know what orange glad it's friday oh <laughs> well i definitely am thanks for hanging out with us this week we'll see you next see week you next week all, all right, right. Oh my gosh, you're so silly. <laughs> so silly.